Look at this lovely, lovely evening. It's Thursday night, and there's a lot of beauty in the garden right now. But what I'd rather focus on first, even though we have brand new lilies, and the hollyhocks doing great, and all of that, is the things that make permaculture ugly for me. The things I struggle with to not just be unsightly all the time. There's a boat down there. <laughs> and um, mostly, has to do with the permaculture principle of there is no such place as a way, you don't throw things away, and the problem is the solution. And I will admit that trying to apply these has made a tremendous mess in my zone here. There goes the boat again. <laughs> um, so, Solar treating, but I kind of want to phase out plastics. Tire sidewalls, including a tire that I realized has been buried over there for quite a while and is now starting to show. Hoses all over the place. My neighbor's broken wheelbarrow is still just sitting in the weeds. Oh, but how much less sightly it was when I didn't have this first load of wood chips. I can't even begin to tell you how bad it was. All of this was just... The entire front yard was just tarped over with plastic. You recall that I had to burn what was in the fire pit before I could go get the heap that was blocking my stairs over there into the fire pit in prep for the next burn, whenever that will be. I save my paper trash, it overflows in my kitchen <laughs> until I'm ready to do it. Looks like I'll need to do one soon if I actually want to get my elderberry crop here. These, these little suckers can get out of hand quickly. Those are called tent worms. They're native but they are not friendly to a garden. They will bag up the entire plant pretty quickly. So the best solution is to cut them off and throw them in the fire. But I'm in the middle of a hutch build for the secondary hutch. Um, I kind of underestimated the difficulty of having too many roosters for my first run in um, quail. But now that the roosters are all together, they're doing fine. But I still would rather not have the hen in my kitchen. You know, it's just a preference, I suppose. One watering station here equals... Well, honestly, I do think that this area tends to attract a bunch of critters that want to dig. And so, we get things like this. Mm. I'm not entirely convinced all of those are going to make it. Even that rained twice today, and I watered them in real good. <sighs> And then, of course, the porch ends up being what I've heard out of Lakers call a resources depot. <sighs> Which means I'm setting aside boxes. This was a much thicker pile of boxes the other day. Uh, in order to smother out that area that's covered in plastic up front. And to get it covered with this. And then there's also, did I point at this pile of brush that I dragged out from the back. When I cut the hedges, I let the leaves drop off of them as best they can, and then I decide if I'm burning them or using them, and in this case, I think I'm gonna use them to weight down the boxes, because I am getting low on wood chips, and I've been renewing and renewing my chip drop order, but um, 
the current situation in the world is not making it easy to get a load of wood chips right now. So I'm still waiting. So, yeah, since I only have so many wood chips, then I really need to smother it with what I do have. And so I spend a lot of time working on trying to save resources, but I really don't have, I mean, this was clean just five months ago. You've seen it. If you were here, you saw it. It was beautifully clean. And I had this set up so that it could handle my um, excess, like, and, and incoming, because I do also have people bring their pots if they can and if they're willing. I so appreciate being brought people's pots after they plant out whatever they purchased. And someday, when I have a little bit better of a vehicle situation, I plan to coordinate with Home Depot, and they they have uh, plant pot waste that you can go and raid for. And so I think I might need a car for that, but a longer range electric bicycle plus a trailer also might cover for that. I haven't measured it out. I will look into it. Um, yeah, so we got boxes, um, and of course the whole electrical bicycle situation hanging out on the porch here, waiting for my spokes to someday arrive and or for me to decide to have two. <sighs> um... You can see I haven't been doing too great on actually getting around to harvesting the reblooming day lately. So I have like three bags full of them right now. Here's another thing ugly with permaculture. Uh, you usually end up wanting to leave the bugs and the pest problems just go with permaculture. And that is so um, that the predators for that particular pest can move in. Now last week, these were covered in aphids and that's why it's all curly. And you know, now I see that I see a lot less aphids, which is amazing because there was nothing but aphids on here. Like the top leaves were just black. The damage of that's still showing and the leaves are still curly and crinkly and unhappy. And then before long, the monarch Butterflies, caterpillars will come and launch these into oblivion. They'll be completely gunito, <laughs> just wiped out. And that'll look like, you know, it, that'll look like it wasn't supposed to happen. But it was supposed to happen. Look, even with all that aphids, this one's still blooming. It's amazing, too, that the aphids are gone, but this, this ugly is intentional, because that's milkweed. And we just let that go. And if you let it go, the right thing moves in, but you have to be patient with the ugly. Back here, my plum was completely covered in ants. I don't know if the dry weather just tamed down whatever they were after all over the leaves. Now here's one. And you saw the ants all over the, um... Yeah, can we see them? There you go. So, a couple weeks ago, this plant was just crawling with those. And now its leaves are all cronkly. And there's, I think that's an aphid. Right, um, oops, it flew away. I bumped it and it flew or fell or something. So, this is a plum tree, and its leaves don't look healthy. The same thing happens with the... The only pests that I do go after are the tent worms, with, which I showed you in the front. Um, same thing happens with this cherry, though. It has a tendency to drop all its leaves. It's got some issues. And then there's this cherry over here, which has dead man finger fungus at the base. 
If you haven't if been here when I showed it before, I'll just give you a quick peek. Oh, this needs to go. Mm. I'm not a fan of Canada bull thistle. <laughs> Here, that is one dead man's fungus. There's a couple down in there. And they are just coming right up out of this cherry, which is also missing most of its bark around the base. And there are entire branches, like this entire branch, there's no leaves on it. So there are entire branches that are just dead. And I am thinking about cutting that one off. Um, seeing what happens next. But, because we're doing permaculture, I can allow its root shoots, as well as the shoots from the Saskatoon, I can allow that to come on up, and I would like to have a passage here. That would be nice. So we'll see how it goes back in here. I may have to cut some of those back. It's hard to say. Got a black cherry coming up right here, but I do think I'll transplant it rather than leave it here. Yeah. That robin flying away is a signal that I think I missed at least some of my red currants. There's one. I'll just eat it. Yeah, I missed some. I got about half. That's fine. So that's the ugly part of sharing with the birds and the rabbits. Do we finally have any sunflowers coming up? No. At least the lupines took. Sheesh. I planted seeds right before a long dry spell. My bad. Hmm. That's right. Lovage seeds seem to enjoy being pollinated by ants as well. I think this tree actually calls them. Yeah. Oh, good! That is a wood anemone. Anemone? How the heck do you say that word? Anemone? Anemone? Nemanomanumana? But, um, there was a native seed swap down in town a couple of years ago, and I grabbed one packet off the door of the one shop that was by my, my bus stop in the morning. The next day it was still there. And, um, that's what happened. That's a native, native wood flower. Native woods. Like deep shade type of flower, sorry, we're still blurry. Hmm, there goes that rabbit. <sighs> Smells wonderful. Between the flowers on the milkweed and the lilies being open, it turns out these narrow leafed lilies are the white ones. And I guess the thicker ones are going to be orange, but... Those are really pretty. And then these smell just as good as the lilies do. And they're edible, unlike those lilies. These lilies are not edible. Madonna lilies are. But you better know for sure that it's pure. And that's, that's all that's there. There's an ugly. The milkweed bug. But hey, there's why there's not so many aphids anymore. There goes a ladybug. And a great big 
bumblebee. That is the rusty patch bumble, which is an endangered native bee to the Pittsburgh area. They're called rusty patch because of that little patch under back. Ooh, you're cute. You made me jump because I didn't realize how close you were, but they will totally let you pet them. <laughs> Cutie pies. Ah. Yep, more flowers opening up. Hmm. They also end up loving the drumstick allium, which will turn purple. All these little puff balls up here. There goes that freaking rabbit again. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. And then there was the conversation that I had with the groundhog last year about whether or not that groundhog might consider leaving me anything in the way of raspberries, and it looks like we're back to that conversation again. I trap and kill the groundhogs, because I'm sick of them. But, um, keep getting free refills on groundhogs. It's a little bit annoying to never know where all the peas are, but it is nice wandering around looking for things to eat. Stupid Rosa Sharon. Hmm. Tried something, it failed. I don't want to be wasteful, so I'm trying to think if there's anything I can use with the trash before I have to bust it down and throw it out. I've got this big pile of sticks down here too that I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with. Thinking they might be part of a retainer wall because again, the Rosa Sharon can become part of the solution for the hillside, as can the sumac that won't flower until it's huge, and I don't want it to get huge because it'll block my view. And yeah, I don't know what else to tell you, except sometimes things are a little bit ugly here and there. Overall, I'd say it's very worth it. I would definitely say it's very worth it. Oh, good, the amaranth came up. So I would say that that doubled as, oh, look at the fennel coming up out. Don't mind the neighbors. Um, thinking I'm going to put this hutch I'm building over here. Oop, bonk. All right, so I hope you enjoyed a tour of what's ugly about my permaculture that I can think of today. <laughs> I'm sure I'll think of more things. I might even do a monthly out of this, like a series, you know? Permaculture fails, permaculture the ugly. Um, yep. Take care. Hope you're having a good Thursday. Oh, good. The black walnut is coming back. Great. Now that I definitely know what it is. <laughs> Look at that stump. Another ugly thing. And this freaking tree coming out of the guardrail. Ha! Alas. I hope you've enjoyed the pretty parts and the ugly parts, and... That way you can make an informed decision about whether permaculture is good for you. I think it's the best. It's good to not be wasteful. Even if it makes things, boxes, branches, and the leftover plastic. Even if it makes those things a little bit hard to deal with. Please do stick around for more videos and that way you can see the good sides too. Take care. Thanks. Bye.